Hello, I'm Dr. Daisy Frankort, and I'm an Associate Professor of Psychobiology and Epidemiology at University College London. My research focuses on the effects of social isolation and social engagement on people's health. So I'm going to talk about the potential impact that COVID-19 might have on our mental health. On the surface of it, it might seem that COVID-19 is very similar to other types of social isolation. So we might think that we already know quite a bit about how it's going to affect us. But in fact, COVID is quite different. We've been put into lockdown in COVID very abruptly uh, because of the pandemic. And this is quite different from types of social isolation that might have evolved gradually over time as people aged or as they lost family and friends. Also, unlike traditional social isolation, we're actually able to stay very connected during this pandemic through things like digital and online contact. And this is something that we typically see decreasing as people get isolated in the standard way. So this means how confident can we be that we know how COVID is going to affect our mental health? Previous studies on standard social isolation have suggested there can be adverse effects, for example, increases in depression and anxiety, but this could be different with COVID. For example, people are not necessarily just worried about being on their own or at home, but they're also worried about things like financial stresses, about work, about actually catching an illness or recovering from it, about access to food. And these are things that are quite unique to pandemics compared to other types of isolation. But even with previous pandemics, things are quite different from how they are with COVID-19. Previously, we had relatively small numbers of people having to go into quarantine, whereas COVID-19 is affecting the entire world. So it's a global uh, restriction of movements. Now, this means that we actually might have some things that are slightly better than for traditional quarantines. For example, there's little fear of missing out at the moment, given there's very little to miss out on. But it also means that we can't necessarily be confident that we know how this is going to affect us. So it's crucial that we gather new data that will help us to understand how COVID-19 specifically is affecting people's mental health. So at UCL, we've launched a study that's doing weekly tracking of over 75,000 people living in the UK. We've already got some preliminary data coming out of the research. And what we've been finding is that there are certain aspects of mental health that are performing in a slightly similar way to previous um, research that's been done on social isolation. But we're also seeing some things that are slightly different. For example, we're finding that anxiety is actually decreasing since lockdown came in. And this could be that people are actually feeling safer in their homes. We've actually seen there's a parallel decrease in people's worries about catching COVID, perhaps because they know that if they're following the guidelines, they're less likely to catch it. And we're also seeing that there's been a decrease in a relative stabilization of people's worries about things like finance and work. Importantly, we've also seen that worries relating to food have decreased around fourfold since the lockdown came in. There are also indications that people's life satisfaction might be increasing slightly. When we look at the data from YouGov, which polls people's well-being on a weekly basis, we can see that in the lead up to COVID-19 lockdown being announced in the UK, there was actually quite a dramatic decrease in people's well-being. But we're now starting to see that we're returning towards those baseline levels. But what's going to be crucial here is seeing how does this actually evolve over the coming weeks? Do we find that actually people start to adapt and cope even better with what's going on? Or do we start to find that actually things start to get worse? We can already see there are certain groups who are finding this much tougher than others. We've got much higher levels of depression and anxiety amongst people who had previous diagnoses of mental health problems, as we might well expect. But we're also seeing high levels amongst people who are living alone or people who are living in households with a low annual income. In other words, people who might be finding this financially more difficult as a period. We're also finding that younger adults are finding this tougher, particularly they're showing more volatile patterns of mental health. And they're also showing higher levels of loneliness in this period. It's possible that for older adults, particularly those who are retired, this actually might have been an easier period because the differences between their previous lives and the lives now may have been slightly smaller. It's also possible that we might see some increases in well-being for certain groups. For example, we've had a major recognition of the role of key workers during this pandemic in the UK, and people starting to value a lot of jobs much higher than they were previously valued because their fundamental importance to society has been demonstrated so clearly. 
But this, of course, raises the question about what can we all be doing to try and stay well at home during this period? There are a number of things that have been suggested from previous research studies and also from previous experiences that we can draw on here. So we know, for example, that having a daily routine can be really important in trying to maintain a sense of normality in this period. It can also help if we stay connected to others as much as possible, for example, through messaging, through video calls. This can help to reduce feelings of isolation and loneliness. There's also research that we've conducted at UCL showing the importance of having a sense of purpose day to day. This might be things like having time to engage in hobbies or projects that we enjoy as a form of self-care. But it also might be things like feeling a sense of purpose from volunteering within the community or from helping family or loved ones to get through this experience by providing emotional support to them. There's also a very strong literature on the importance of exercise and staying active, whether that's doing activities at home or whether that's going out once a day for exercise outside of the home. So it's important that people keep up with the usual recommendations around things like exercise, but also around things like a good diet to try and protect their mental health. It's going to be very important over the coming weeks that we really keep a track of what happens to people's mental health. It's also really important that we have these data so that we understand for the future what support is going to be needed for people as we emerge from this period of isolation and also what support is going to be needed in the future if and when a situation like this occurs again. It's possible too that this whole period in this pandemic will actually redefine our notions of isolation and help us to understand this phenomenon as it usually occurs within society in a more nuanced and sophisticated way. In the meantime, if people are interested in supporting this research, they can do so by going to covid19study.org and taking part each week.